In the headlines, APC National Chairman Adamu to hold emergency meeting with party governors on Sunday amidst Naira crisis. CBN makes U-turn, denies giving directives to banks to accept old 500 and 1,000 Naira notes. Internally displaced persons in Katsina without permanent voter cards a few days to elections. And on the foreign scene, Ghanaian footballer Atsu's body found under rubble as death toll tops 45,000 in Turkey-Syria quakes. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Hello and welcome once again. The All Progressives Congress has summoned an emergency meeting of all governors elected under its platform. A statement issued by the party's publicity secretary, Felix Morka, on behalf of the national chairman, says the meeting will hold at the party's national secretariat in Abuja on Sunday by 2 p.m. The meeting may not be unconnected with the ongoing narrow crisis in the country, where the governors have gone on confrontation with President Muhammad Buhari over the Naira redesign policy that is impoverishing the masses and putting the party in bad light of the public. It is believed that Sunday's meeting is meant to make the hardline governors who took the presidency to court over the policy to shift ground and probably withdraw the case against Buhari and the CBN at the apex court. And barely one week to the forthcoming presidential elections, a spokesperson for Tunibu Shetima Presidential Campaign Council, Bayo Onanuga, has insisted that his principal deserves the support of President Muhammad Buhari. The statement is contained in a post via his Twitter handle on Saturday. Onanuga noted that Tinubu campaigned vigorously for Buhari during the 2015 presidential election, adding that Buhari should do the same for Tinubu now that he is running for president. The Central Bank of Nigeria has denied media reports suggesting that the Apex Bank directed commercial banks to accept old 500 and 1,000 Naira notes. A statement signed by Osita Mwasiobi, the Director of Corporate Communications, said the President's broadcast directed to CBN to only reissue and recirculate the old 200 Naira as legal tender till April 10th, asking members of the public to disregard contrary information. Reports on Friday had it that the Central Bank of Nigeria had asked banks to start collecting the old 500 and 1,000 Naira notes from customers, stating that any amount above 500,000 could not be deposited. And speak still on the Nari design policy, many traders in Kano find it difficult to swap old Nari notes with new ones at the central bank office in the state. Many who came for the purpose were told to deposit their monies at commercial banks after spending hours on the queue. The report. <laughs> This man said he brought about 5 million naira cash for the swap, but was referred to Internet Cafe, where he was told that the portal is currently undergoing maintenance. After spending several hours, they told us to go back to our banks. That is those that are with 500,000 Naira and below. We are all angry. This is all I have. Government is not fair to us. I have 160,000 Naira and I'm ready to collect 150,000 Naira. I have been here for so long. There is God. That is all that I will say to the government. This trader, however, is still accepting old Naira notes from his customers to ease their difficulties. Despite President Buhari's directive to CBN to release old 200 Naira back to circulation, scarcity of the Naira is biting harder in the state. And normalcy has returned to Lagos communities after protests against the rejection of old Naira notes turned violent. Residents protested the rejection of the old narrow notes by traders and commercial drivers. The report. 
The violent protest broke out in some parts of Lagos State Friday morning over Naira scarcity. At my 12, a popular international food stuff market along Ikorodu, protesters blocked the road and set bonfires, making computers trap. High weakness account says there was pandemonium as many civil servants as possible, and those going outside Ikorodu had to make a U turn for fear of being hit. The protesters demand the rejection of the old Naira note by traders. Some of the traders at my 12 market say scarcity of the new Naira note and the rejection of the old 500 Naira and 1000 Naira note ignite the protests. We all are hustling for this leg of this my this my 12. Most of this leg my 12. We went to bank. Bank did not collect this money, this old money. So, and this money is too much for this my 12. Mostly in this my 12. This is one of the plot, what, what, things that cause problem this morning. Because when you give the conduct, doctor say no collect and from there a fight begin to happen for this money. Because of this old money. This money is too much outside. We are begging people, our leaders, to sustain the debt of this money. Because this money is too much for our hands. People are calling money up and down for this my 12. To buy food stuff, no way. People are hungry this my 12, this money. We are walking up and down this morning. No way to spend, to, change, to spend this money. This money is too much for our hands. Please, we are begging Nigeria, our leaders, let them sustain this debt. Even two days or three days, please. Please, because we are going to vote. And we get hungry and vote in that day. We can't get hungry and vote. Some of the transporters also voiced out their pains on the low circulation of the new note in the country. We are going to apply, apply and pay the various governments. My name is Minister for Women Affairs in this area. I'm begging you and members of the Lagos State Parking Manager Garage. I'm begging the federal government to allow this Lagos states and federal government of Nigeria to be peace. If they want to do fair and lesson, they are nowhere to do it without yourself. Bihari himself know the way they're taking to enter the federal government of the nation. When we got them presidents, Bihari know. When you're going to be a president, Bihari know the way they're getting to that place. Should please help us. Any kind of election you have in Lagos State, in Nigeria, should be fair election. We are not dragging out of election. We are not supporting anybody. We are supporting Nigeria. We are pleasing him. Let the sovereignty be calm down. We are sovereign in Nigeria. We are pleasing you. Everyone let the federal government of Nigeria to know we are sovereign. This morning, the thing will happen this morning for myself. I collected this morning for yesterday night. For my passenger, I'll be driver. I want you this morning by four inside village station this morning. They do not collect them. How are you mark me to use them? Say so make I go to a way I'll be make I cook and for a pot. Make I eat them. Uh, what you got me make us make the job now? We just stop now. Now my job we do now, we won't buy something. Yes, now my job we do now, we won't buy something. We don't say anything back. Money day, money day for our hand now. Money day for our hand now. You know, see how to spend now. What do you use how to make her for? No, go cook, cook her. Anti riot policemen and soldiers have been deployed to various flashpoints while the commissioner of police, Ido Owonwa, has been going around the trouble spot. Residents, however, urged the federal government to allow the use of both the old and the new Naira note pending the resolution of the pending case at the Supreme Court. And the currency scarcity occasioned by the now redesigned policy is taking a toll on small businesses in Abuja. Trust TV's Kabir Law spoke to skillful workers on how they are coping with the cashless policy that has made it difficult for people to feed themselves and their families. Since the release of new Nera notes into circulation, many businesses suffered from scarcity of new notes. But matters became worse when other businesses refused to collect the old notes, leaving people with no option other than using electronic payment platforms or the new narrow notes that are increasingly difficult to get. While many believe that it is just a matter of time, some said the policy has made them lose customers. It's been, it's been really tough, man. I think uh, these days we are really getting it tough in the sense that it's, it's, it's still affecting our work and businesses. Weekend like this. Normally people fool here, people fool here, but nowadays they are scanty because of the 
scarcity of cash. This morning, I went to POS to collect 1,000 Naira. I swear to God who made me. There, there's no money. I'm granted totally. People came to do transfer to withdraw the money. It's not available. They are creating a new for people to buy to buy food. Are you telling me now? If I, 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 I remain like this till election day, somebody will come to me, I will not collect money. They are creating somebody that doesn't feed well. And you see somebody that bring money to him. They, they will collect. They are affecting me now. They are affecting me very well now. How? So I know there's a business now there. If you give person account number, you know if you transfer for me now. Because network, uh, network there now. Because there are no money floating as it float before. Before it's somebody buys 100 naira, you give 100 naira. Or buy 1,000, you give 1,000. But now it has to be a transfer. You know they get, get, get a, a, a bad account. They are threatening me. They complain that the electronic transfer often fails due to network issues, thereby rendering their businesses hopeless. Most of my customers come, they are requesting for transfer. In as much as I still collect the transfer, though, the network don't seem to be effective on it. This clothes, I bought it to transfer money. The, the owner does release the clothes to me based on personal integrity. Because the person knows me. I carry somebody, customer to the shop to buy clothes, to do transfer, the, the, the network is not available. So in fact, everything just, maybe the government are confused, I don't know. Small business owners want governments to make the new notes available to make life more meaningful to Nigerians. Kabir Lowell, Trust TV News, Abuja. And to politics now, where the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Yusuf Dettibab Ahmed, has challenged Nigerians to hold them responsible if they fail to secure and unite the country if given the opportunity in the forthcoming elections. Baba Ahmed addressed a conference in Abuja on Friday. Noel Samson reports. Ahmed sought to preside over the affairs of the country in 2019 under the platform of PDP, but lost the party ticket to Atiku Abubakar. In 2022, he contested to pick PDP governorship ticket in Kaduna State but failed and was subsequently picked as Labour Party presidential running mate. Dati Baba Ahmed wants Nigerians to support his new party to win the election, promising not to disappoint if elected. We have asked Nigerians to hold us responsible if we fail as promised to secure, unite and prosper our dear nation. Nigeria. We have asked them to hold us responsible if we fail to move Nigeria from consumption to production. We have asked them to hold us accountable if we fail to build a 21st century economy propelled by technology. And if we fail to transform the vast arable land in Nigeria, especially northern Nigeria, into the new oil. We will bear the full responsibility if we fail to build the required human capital and skill for the 21st century economy that we live in. Hold us responsible if we fail to cut waste in government and drastically fight corruption, which has permeated every segment and sector of our national life. He also called on the Independent National Electoral Commission to do the needful so that Nigerians could have free, fair and credible elections. I therefore sustain the call on INEC to be an impartial umpire and not frustrate the will of the people. I implore security agencies, the police, the military, the DSS and other uniformed officers to conduct themselves with utmost responsibility and resist the temptation to subvert the will of the people. He also commented on the raging controversy on NERA redesign policy. If um, an elected governor of a constituent part of a sovereign country will give direct instructions to the contrary of what is constitutionally the exclusive preserve of the federal government, like it or hate it, Buhari's government was duly elected and sworn in 
uh, Nigeria is a sovereign state. And currency matters are a sovereign issue. Baba Ahmed appealed to Nigerians to endure the current Nera scarcity, saying it will soon be a thing of the past. No, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. You're watching Trust TV News Update and still ahead. We'll show you how shortage of medical personnel scares patients. Details of this and more after the break. You stay with us. At last, the elections are here. Let's turn out en masse on election day and vote Ashiwa Yubola Tinubu as president of Nigeria for a renewed hope and a better Nigeria. Vote ABC, the party that shows a broom. Nigeria's 2023 general elections are just around the corner and Trust TV is your trusted guide to the polls. With live reports from polling stations, coalition centers and key locations across the country, you won't miss a moment of the action as we bring you comprehensive coverage and analysis with invited guests, including politicians, experts and voters to join us in the studio for in-depth discussions throughout the day. You will also have your say too. Call in, share your thoughts on social media, take part in our live polls as well as our question and answer sessions. So join Nigeria Decides on Trust TV on Election Day starting at 8 a.m. for the most comprehensive and trustworthy coverage of the 2023 general election. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trans TV News Update. Now let's take another look at our top stories. APC National Chairman Adamu to hold emergency meeting with party governors on Sunday amidst Naira crisis. And CBN makes U-turn, denies giving directives to banks to accept old 500 and 1,000 Naira notes. And moving on to other news. Some internally displaced persons in Katsuna State are without permanent voter cards. They said they lost their PVCs in a struggle to escape bandits' attacks in their communities four to five years ago. Abdullahi Yamadi speaks to them on how they feel as Election Day approaches. This is an unofficial IDP camp in Katsuna with people from Jibia. Basari, Safana, Damusa, and Duzuma local governments. The IDPs made several attempts to register themselves and obtain PVCs, but they were told they are in an unofficial camp, as such, not recognized to participate in any election process. Squatting in uncompleted buildings, not sure of where their next meal will come from. The IDP's future looks bleak. Their voices silenced, and they cannot partake when Nigeria decides in a few days. No one is taking care of us here. Our lives depend on God. But as far as authorities are concerned, we never exist. You can see our children no longer go to school. How do you expect us to vote even if we have PVCs? Anyone you see here is a beggar, and they say a beggar has no choice. My own is prayer for God to choose leaders who can support us and bring peace to guarantee our safety here and in our local communities. But for now, life continues. As early as 7 a.m., many households go out to fetch firewood for sale, while the young ones seek revenge to make end meet. They are, however, hopeful that one day peace will return to their local communities to enable them go back home and live a normal life. 
gaskiya lokacin da muka je inda za mu bo ta suka ta aka ce mana an rufe most of us have to go out and beg for what to eat if we get breakfast only god will take care of the next meal we only surviving by the special grace of god mafi yawanci dai wasu ba su da shi gaskiya they said their prayer is for peace to return and half the nigeria that was once a place they called home abdullahi ismayamadi crossed television news kazana And now to health matters, where healthcare delivery in the country has been dealt a severe blow following the increased migration rate of health personnel to other countries for greener pastures. Poor remuneration, lack of commensurate welfare package, as well as inadequate infrastructural facilities are among the reasons adduced by medical personnel for the brain drain in their profession. Hamid Oyekbadi reports. Over the years, Doctors and nurses in Nigeria have complained of poor pay compared to what their peers in other countries earn. The World Health Organization recommends a ratio of one doctor per 600 patients as against the one doctor per 5,000 patients ratio in Nigeria. This has led to serious manpower crisis in most health facilities in the country with the earth workers already being overstretched. The consequences of present brain drain, uh, the effects are more on our patients uh, because our responsibility is to attend to patients. But now as we have it, we have most of the health care centers, most of the uh, health facilities being manned by non-doctors. Uh, because when doctors have migrated, other cadres of health workers have to come in and that has, had, that has had effect on our patients. It has increased the mortality rate. If your best are leaving the country, obviously you cannot get the best out of the system. It has negative effect on the practice at the country where majority have checked out of the country. Initially by WHO standard, we're supposed to have ratio one to four patients being cared for in an hospital setup. But now, because of the brain drain, we are having ratio of one to 60, if not one to 80 now. So it has negative effect. Though medical brain drain is a global phenomenon, the recent mass migration of medical personnel from Nigeria is worrisome. Babatunde Lekan Olatunji, the chief whip of the Ocean State House of Assembly, says government must address the challenge to ensure that the health sector does not crash. It's a loss to us as a country. If we sacrifice to train great talents and then other nations wait to harvest them, so it's a loss to us, and of course, there is need for us um, to ensure that the leadership looks into talent uh, retaining strategies by providing um, all that is required to make um, life easy. That, of course, would justify the fact that these are professionals who are also willing to serve their nation. And then we encourage our doctors to also uh, put the love of their country at heart. Quality health care delivery stakeholders say is key to ensuring a healthy nation and productive citizens and justifies the maxim that health is wealth. Amid Ojebade, Trust TV News, Oshobo. And a pair of U.S. lawmakers have called on the United States to rescind a nearly $1 billion helicopter sale to Nigeria, saying that allegations of a forced abortion program have renewed concerns on human rights. Congress had delayed the sale over concerns about the Nigerian army's commitment to protect civilians as it battles an uprising in the Northwest, as well as the bloody repression of protests against police violence in 2020. Well, President Joe Biden's administration approved the sale of the 12 Viper attack helicopters last year, saying the equipment will promote security in Africa's most populous country. Representatives Chris Smith, a Republican active on human rights and a strong opponent of abortion, and Sarah Jacobs, a Democrat who formerly worked for the State Department, said that Nigeria's armed forces had a consistent record of abuses 
and that past aid had done little to boost security. The U.S. lawmakers comes the call comes amid sporadic violence ahead of the February 25th elections in Nigeria. And more than 45,000 people have been killed in the earthquake that struck Turkey and Syria. The death toll is expected to soar with some 264,000 apartments in Turkey destroyed and many still missing in the country's worst modern disaster. Eleven days after the quake hit, three survivors were dug out from the rubble in Turkey on Friday. The death toll in Turkey stands at 39,672, while neighboring Syria has reported more than 5,800 deaths. Syria's toll has not changed for days, uh, while monks around the world on Friday performed absentee funeral prayers for the death in Turkey and Syria, many of whom could not face or receive full burial rights given the enormity of the disaster. Meanwhile, Ghanaian footballer Christian Atsu has been found dead under the building where he lived in southern Turkey after last week's massive earthquake, the ex-Chelsea winger's Turkish agent said. Said Atsu has been scheduled to fly out of southern Turkey hours before the quake, but Hataya Spor's manager said on Friday the Ghanaian opted to stay with the club after scoring the game-winning goal in the February 5th Super League match. The 31-year-old secured Hataya Spor's 1-0 win over Kisim Pasa by scoring only seconds before the final whistle. And that wraps up Trust TV News update for this hour. For more news, you can subscribe and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.